So I grow mushrooms all year round, and I even do it in the depths of winter here. It doesn't get too cold, maybe on a cold night, sort of negative three, negative two uh, at most. And how do I do that exactly? Well, I do it by using a preconditioning room like the one behind you. So we'll take you through that now and just how it works. Now, I run an online course which takes people through uh, how I plan and predict my profit on my farm here, which is a fairly profitable farm. Um, and someone asked me a, uh, a question here, um, and I'm answering this question via video because I think it's quite a good question. Um, and it says, Tom, thanks for the content. I have a question around the temperature control and air exchange. Cool. You use a preconditioning room, yes we do, which you just saw out the back there. And you draw from that and exhaust to the atmosphere. Yes, we do. So we draw from that room out the back and we, um, we exhaust to the atmosphere. Is there any reason you wouldn't use a ducted air conditioning system that can manage zone temperatures for the fruiting and incubation rooms along with the exhaust? Now that's a good question, so we'll take you back out to my uh, preconditioning room there and we'll sort of take you through one of the main reasons why we don't use or we never opted for a ducted air conditioning system. Right, so behind me here you can see my preconditioning room. Um, it's just an outdoor chili unit. Um, it's got the pipe feed, the main air feed right here, and down here is the air intake. Uh, that goes to a heat exchanger. I haven't connected that heat exchanger yet. I've been a little bit lazy, but um, it's just so far down on my list of things to do. Um, and obviously a uh, uh, protector which I built just to keep the water off there. Now we'll go into my preconditioning room here. Right, so we're inside here now. Um, and just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to kill this humidifier which you might see running. So inside my preconditioning room here, we'll take you through the components of it. Um, we've got my big commercial heat pump here, that's an 11 kilowatt heat pump. Um, it's got a big inverter on the outside. The heat exchangers are on the wall there, which I haven't set up to use yet. Just again, down on my list of priorities. Um, some power, some control up here, obviously lights on the roof. Uh, this is a relay, you might have seen a PID on there, but the PID is not in use, I'm just using that for the relay. Um, and that relay switches the power on and off for a humidifier in here. Um, and up here we've got a, temp a humidity probe here and obviously a filter. Um, and that humidity probe is just controlling the humidity from my humidifier down on the ground here. So the question is why don't you use a ducted uh, uh, air conditioning unit or heat pump to just heat, heat the air as it's going through a pipe and into the fruiting room. Um, the main reason we do that is because, uh, to cut a long story short, we need to do two things in here, okay, we need to do two things. We need to heat the air or cool the air, great, easy to do, and a ducted heat pump can do that. But we also, when heating the air, we need to humidify it. Now it took me a long time to figure this out, and I've actually, if you look back over some of my previous videos, I was having trouble with heating air um, or the air in my fruiting room is getting too cold at night and so I'm insulating and doing all this carry on. And then I clicked onto what I was doing wrong. You see I was heating the air with my heat pump, um, the air would come in through the vent down there, down there, the air would come in and it would be heated, but it wouldn't be humidified so the air would get hotter and drier, okay? So then we've got this really hot, really dry air and it's charging on down this vent here and it's getting pumped into my fruiting room where it's getting humidified and what happens when you humidify air? it cools down. So the air was getting really hot, really dry in here, going into the fruiting room, getting humidified, and the temperature was crashing. It was going straight back down. And the, the humidity of the air coming out of here after it had been heated up might have been down like 20%. I don't know, it was really, really super dry, right? So we're heating this air and we're drying it out, which is bad. So the one solution I found, and it took me so long to figure this out, and I don't know why I didn't think of it, I should have, like, I've got a really old video um, talking about this phenomenon of, of where you humidify air, it cools down and it helps cooling a fruiting room in summer. But in winter, it has the, a bad effect of, of keeping your fruiting room cold. So the one way we get round to that is we humidify, with a little humidify here. So this humidifier is uh, working in here and it's getting controlled um, by this, uh, this American-made Dwyer, um, uh, uh, hydro, uh, what's the name for it? Humidity probe. <laughs> This humidity probe here, so that's getting control with the humidity probe. Now what we do is we heat the air in here and we humidify it. So when the air is coming out here, right, when the air is coming out here into the fruiting room, not only is it warm, but it's partially humid, right? Preconditioning room, you need to do those two things. You need to heat, if you're using this to heat up, you need to heat and you need to humidify, partially humidify. So we hum humidify to about 70% in here. Right, we don't want to go too high because we don't end up corroding our heat pumps or anything. So humidify to 70%. And that way when the warm, 70% humid air gets into our fruiting rooms, 
and it gets uh, humidified from then, you know, 70, 70%, 80, 85, 90%, it doesn't cool down much more and it helps retain the heat in our preconditioning room. So to go back to the question, we don't use a ducted system because a ducted system would be more challenging, I think, for me to run a humidifier in it. You could put a, ducted ba a duct based humidifier in there, um, but again, it could be challenging. Um, You'd have to humidify either before the heat pump or after it, just too hard basket. We just have the heat pump in here. This humidifies. The heat pump uh, heats up that uh, humid air and it pumps it down to the fitting room. Now in summer, you won't actually need to use that uh, humidifier in there because in summer, you want to get this room as cold as possible and ideally as dry as possible. So then when you uh, pump your, your dry cold air through and it goes into the fitting room and humidifies, it gets even colder. We get reasonably hot summers here, you know, like sort of, like a really, a warm day would sort of be like 25 degrees here, so not too hot, um, 30 at max. Uh, so, but the fitting rooms can heat up. So you want to do this the opposite in summer, um, and you won't be running the humidifier, you're keeping it as dry as possible and the air as cold as possible in there. Um, so when you do humidify the air in the fitting rooms, it can cool down further. It's just when you're using these rooms to heat up, you want to be able to humidify um, so when the, that warm uh, uh, air goes through into those fitting rooms, it doesn't cool back down. So we're back inside now. We come through, um, yeah, here's my two fitting rooms. Now I've actually changed how I operate these slightly. That's my uh, high humidity fitting room. So that will sit at about 90%, and that's to get some good pin sets through, and it's to grow some of our native, uh, our native uh, sort of coral tooth mushrooms we have here. And this here is my lower humidity room, because the, um, in cold weather, the Italian oyster, which I predominantly grow, doesn't like humidity. If it's cold, it hates humidity. So you've got to run a lower humidity room. Now this room here will sit usually about, um, it'll get up to about 75, 80 at night, and it will sit at about 70 uh, during the day. And we find that produces a really pretty good quality mushroom. Um, it doesn't need this high humidity. Um, and if you if you see photos of people growing the Italian oyster, pulmonarius mushroom, and the edges are real curled up, so the caps normally looks like that, like it grows out and looks like that, but if you see them in the edges have curled up like that there, um, it's generally because they're running a too high humidity and the temperature's just a bit too cold. As for the rest of the farm team, we've been uh, killing it lately. Um, it's been super, super busy around here. So busy, I, I, I rarely get time to even sit down and do this. Um, um, we've got some people working for us, which is good. Um, there's heaps of other, other uh, things we've been doing. Um, we sell a lot of grow, we manufacture and sell a lot of grow kits now, which is really good. Um, if we come down here, you can see the giant pile of them in the hallway. Um, so these have all been manufactured and they get sold, which is really good. Um, so the farm is doing um, ex ex exceptionally well, um, so we're happy with it. If you are interested in seeing how we predict the uh, sort of financial performance of our farm, uh, do check uh, the top pin comment in the about section. I've got a course which I've made, which is down there. Um, also, if you're interested in seeing any specifics about my farm, um, not just basic things like something more in depth, please uh, comment below. I'm happy to make uh, videos like this one for people who have more specific questions.